Today I have 12 Winter Wonderland DIYs. This is a mega video. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. So this is a grapevine wreath that I have used for several crafts and I'm going to use it again. I've probably had this thing for 20 years. It is about 15 inches. You can use whatever you like. And then I have some thrifted picks that are absolutely gorgeous. It looks like they came from Michael's about 100 years ago. There you go. But they're really pretty and they're not frosted and I wanted to do something that wasn't frosted in this wreath. I've got some Southern Living ribbon that was thrifted. The little snowflake ribbon on the side was thrifted and then the other two came from Dollar Tree. The bigger ones are wired, just so you know. Now these particular picks happen to kind of give you the option of having them flat on the back, which I love because I don't have to do so much arranging. I start off by poking the stem down into here, but you can see that this is a struggle. I actually cut my pinky finger doing this. I'm telling you, I have the thinnest skin ever. I think it goes along with being a redhead with freckles. We just don't have a lot of collagen. Now I'm going to use a piece of this wire and I'm going to go into like the center without pressing anything down and then wrap it around the back. It's so funny. I watch other crafters. I, I, I'm not as good about it as I used to be, but I was watching Trish from Crafting Cousins, and she did a wreath that just reminded me so much of this. I just, you know, creative minds think alike, I believe. You should check her out, her and Kay out at Crafting Cousins. All right, so I'm going to continue around here, and I'm just sort of doing a semicircle, and I'm layering them with the stems downward, and then just wiring them down to that frame where they need to be wired. Next, we're going to work on this bow. Guys, this is a gorgeous bow. If you are into bows, you are going to love this one. So we're going to use 10 inch loops. And I think I mentioned this is wired ribbon. So we're going to one, two, three. And then I'm just counting here to see how many I got. So you're going to loop it over on itself three or four times. And then you can trim it off and go on to your next ribbon. This is some thick stuff. I love this ribbon. Then we're going to go to the next one and it's going to be about 10 inches. I think I managed to get it a little bit smaller when I was folding, but that's okay. Going to continue to go folding, folding over on itself. And then cut it off. It doesn't have to be the same amount of loops as the other one, by the way. Just whatever you want to do. So now this one, and this is thrifted also, and I got this from, um, I think this comes from maybe Michael's or Hobby Lobby in the wedding section. I believe I've seen it when I've been in there shopping before. Really pretty. It's got little pearl beads on the side. Just really pretty. So now I'm going to bend this in half, this stack, and I'm going to take my scissors Try to line my edges up and just cut into it. You want to cut through that edge and barely into the burlap or the fabric, whichever ribbon you're using. I'm folding again to find my center point. Cut just through the wire, just through the wire, because this isn't burlap, it's thinner. And then this one, because it is so thick, I'm using my pliers here, my little cutters, to just cut into the wire and a little bit into the burlap. So now we are going to start stacking this bow. Make sure that your loops are on top and that that free edge, that straight edge is on the bottom. Those are gonna be the tails, those straight parts. So we're gonna take a, <laughs> I doubted if I was gonna be able to get this entire bunch into this zip tie, but it worked. So um, yeah, you're gonna take a zip tie for this one. It's gonna take a lot of tugging on this bow to get it all fluffed out. The struggle is real, but I'm going to tell you right now, it is so worth it. So worth it. All the work, and I like it. There's something about touching all that fabric, pulling all of those pieces apart, and seeing what it comes up to look like. Because when you first do it, it just looks like, you know, panels of fabric or panels of ribbon. It's flat, and you start questioning things, and then as you fluff from the bottom upward, that's how I do it, you just start to see this beautiful form start to take shape. Look at that, already it's starting to look so much better. Now you can cut off those little tails or you can dovetail them, whichever way you wanna do it. 
be sure that the pretty side is up and generally you can flip those over if it's a good quality um, fabric. This particular ribbon wasn't very good quality so I didn't even bother with it. I just cut those off and then going on to the burlap and the other ribbon I thought those would look nice dovetailed. Give it a little more dimension and I think that looks pretty. And we're going to continue along dovetailing. You know how to do that. And this kind of keeps the frays out of your bows too, so you don't have anything frayed out. You want it to look high-end, right? And if you gave something like this as a gift, nobody would ever know it was handmade. It's just so pretty. Look at the colors. What do you think about the burlap, the white, and the silver? Is that not stunning? Oh, I love that. I love it so much. Okay, so now we need tails for the ribbon. So I'm just gonna stretch out my ribbon and I'm gonna go 18 inches, that's how long this ruler is. I'm gonna cut it off, and I'm gonna do 18 inches also of this one. And then the burlap ribbon with the pearls, it's probably 20 inches long, and I left it long. That's all I had left of that ribbon. So I'm gonna finish it off. Okay, so they're dovetailed and I'm stacking them. And then you can just decide which way that you wanna stack it you know, which one you want in the back, which one you want in the front, how you want it to lay down. Um, if you have different patterns, you know, decide how you want to do your patterns. For me, the idea is to give it some variety and kind of separate it, but to be sure that all of them get a little bit of attention. So I wanted to let that snowflake piece be on top. Taking another zip tie, we're going to go around the center, cinch it really well and trim it off. And then we're going to find our placement on this beautiful wreath. So, you can go down low and fill the whole thing in, or you can leave a little space on the side, which is what I ended up doing, to put another piece there. So I'm just wrapping some wire around and tying it and twisting it, and then I'm gonna thread some wire through this bow on the bottom, and then put it on as close as I can to the greenery without overlapping it. Twist it around in the back and then press it into your wreath so you don't have any wires hanging out. And again with the fluffing. Yes, yes, you must always do this. Always, always. And for the love of Pete, if you ever take a wreath out of a box, please fluff it before you hang it on your wall. It's going to make so much difference. I promise you, you'll be so much happier with it. I'm going to use this gorgeous little Avon perfume holder. I find these kind of things all the time at the thrift store, and I've never thought to get one and use it for anything, but I'll be picking them up from now on. Look at all the class and beauty in that little thing. I'm gonna take some Rust-Oleum Satin Nickel Spray Paint, and after I give that thing a good bath inside and out, I'm gonna spray it, and then we're gonna add some of this wax to it. So I took it apart and spray painted the two different pieces so we wouldn't have any gaps just like that and put it back together and she looks great already right wait till you see what happens when you put the wax on it I've never used the white wax before but I am sold on it I love being a plaid ambassador you get to try so many things and I love showing you guys different things and new techniques and this is just you're gonna love this I think you're really gonna like it so I'm just using this little brush that came from Dollar Tree and I'm swirling it into all of those textured areas on the owl's face. It's almost like a feather pattern and all around his eyes, all around it, just like that. We'll be doing the bottom in just a minute. I was worried when I did this at first because I thought, oh, I think I waited about like just a few seconds and then I use my paper towel to start wiping it away and I'm just stunned by the way this looks this is absolutely gorgeous it looks old it looks like an antique um, look at that look how it brings out all of the dimension in those feathers it's just I'm amazed I'm really amazed so then I thought, okay, this is cool. This, this is going to work. And I went ahead and did all of the bottom too. So all of his body got a good brush of this paint. 
well, of this wax. And then again, wiping that off just a little bit. And then of course, you're gonna have to let it dry. But it's so pretty by itself. I really didn't have to do anything else. But since it's Christmas time, we're gonna give him a little bit more. So I'm gonna use a piece of greenery that I pulled off of another pick. I'm gonna use a little bit of this jute. I'm gonna wrap it around where the, I guess it would be the neck. It's where the bottle top meets the bottom. I'm gonna kinda of pull it down just a little bit. And then this is actually gonna to be too big. As you can see here, it's too big. So I'm gonna trim it down a little bit. Not a problem, I do this all the time. Just a little minor surgery till we can get this looking exactly how we want it. Sorry, I'm out of range there. I got so excited with the waxing, I just totally stopped paying attention to the camera. So, then we're gonna tie that on. You can just tie a little double knot. That'll hold it in place. And then trim off the excess. You could do a bow if you wanted. But I really wanted the attention to be on the owl itself, and I didn't want to do too much to take away from his beauty. I'm going to add another pick on the top with a little bit of hot glue, just kind of nestling on it down there where the, the piece of the jute rope and the other greenery is. And you could stop right there if you wanted. But I think I'm going to add a little of this because it's going to help kind of bring all of our crafts in together. They're going to be coordinated. So with a little hot glue, I'm just going to put a couple of cut pieces into the little greenery pick. Just like that. So pretty. Oh my goodness. I wanna put wax on everything now. There won't be anything in my house that's not waxed. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit of glue just to put that piece of greenery down. All right, we're gonna start off with some frosty snowy picks. And these are some that I got on clearance last year. These are some Dollar Tree poinsettias. And then I have one of these garland pieces or swag pieces, and then some ribbon and some burlap strips. And you're gonna make sure when you get this, um, mine came from a thrift store, but you can use you know, whatever you have. Repurpose something that you're not using anymore. You know, pull that old stuff off and just go with it. I'm flipping it over to make sure everything's flat on the bottom. And then flipping, well, pushing out all of the little pieces kind of to the side here. Trying to make it balanced so there's the same amount on both sides. I'm going to use this sign from the thrift store to make a base so that this can be easily removed from the table when it's time to eat. I'm gonna use some tinsel. Green is good. I didn't have any solid green, so I got this, well, these tinsel looking pipe cleaners, I should say. And I'm gonna just glue these down here, and that's how we're gonna attach it to the wreath. So nothing falls apart. So after the glue has set up, bend those little ends upward, put it on the table, flip this over, put the bottom of your swag piece down on top of your pipe cleaners and you can just feed those through there um, you can see me poking those through there it's easy to do i started in the middle but you can start on the end if you would like and then work your way down to the other end whatever works best for you so now it's attached we're going to leave those little pipe cleaners sticking out because we're going to add our picks right to those i'm going to put them where i want this centerpiece to be balanced on both sides. So I'm trying to make sure that everything is sort of symmetrical on the sides. I do have two more picks that I'm going to add in just a moment and you'll see that. So that these picks are going to make kind of an X in the middle and I hope this view is okay for you. I think you can see everything really well this way. You can see it and um, tell what I'm doing and I'm just twisting those in with the same pipe cleaners I already had. Alright, so I'm going to loosen this one up, add another one across here, and then another one across here. So now we have an X and both sides will look exactly the same. They all fit down in that pipe cleaner. Be sure you use the full length pipe cleaners. Do not cut them in half or you will not have enough for this. You could always use something else to attach them down if you'd like. I have some of this burlap ribbon that I am going to cut into four 12 inch pieces. It is wired 
and that is helpful to know um, because it's going to help us for what we're going to do with it. I'm going to take this, now the top one, that white one came from Hobby Lobby. I got it 50% off in the clearance section and then I got um, that bottom piece, that right there, that came from Dollar Tree and you can get that pretty much all year round I believe. And then we're just going to stack them and you can put wh whichever color you want on top. You don't have to use the burlap, but since I like rustic in my house, I want to keep that theme so that everything coordinates from my tree, you know, to the centerpiece, to the wreaths, um, any little decor pieces that I have. We're going to start by attaching it just with the branches. You just twist your little greenery branches that are under there and you just pinch your, your ribbons and then twist it into that. You see how that works? and then pull those apart so you can get both colors where you can see them, the white and the beige. And then we're gonna go to the other side, wind it in the branches, like that, and then loop it over onto the other side. So if you would like to use a what would that be? 12, 12, 12, and 12. 48 inches, so two feet of ribbon. If you wanted to, um, no, four feet. I think it would be four feet. You know what I mean. If you want to use one length of ribbon instead of cutting it into four parts, is what I am saying, you can certainly do it that way. But um, I wanted to do it this way because I save a little bit of ribbon. And I'm almost out of that white. Okay. Yeah, were y'all shocked when I said I got it from Hobby Lobby? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I couldn't, I haven't been able to find any white like that, so, and I really wanted it, so it was worth it at 50% off. And the rolls are usually pretty good size. So I'm going to continue down all the way to the end. Now the two tips of these, the outer ends of these are kind of sparse, like those trees that you get at Dollar Tree have that one long branch on the end. I just folded it back uh, underneath to get rid of that little silly looking sad piece. And now this one is going to be twisted here on the end. Okay, now we're going to take these poinsettias from Dollar Tree and they look a little sad. You can double them up, which is what I will do here shortly and show you how to do that um, just to give it a little more impact. Otherwise it kind of gets lost in the rest of the greenery, right? You know what I mean? So we're going to fix it so that it, it gets a little more attention. And it almost looks like one flower if you kind of interlace those little petals. You do it however you want. And you don't have to use white. If you're going to use a different color theme, just use different colors. Now, I had some of this frosted fern left from last year. And I think it came from Dollar Tree. Pretty sure that it did. And I thought, you know, this would be a good transition between that evergreen background and the snowy top to put this in here. It's sort of iridescent, it's frosty looking, and it really is pretty. I mean, on its own, it might not look too great, but when you cut it into pieces and then use it as a filler, it looks really nice. What do you think? Do you like that? I think it looks good there. Now, I intentionally left my center open because that's where we're going to put our candles. But this is what we have so far. Okay, so I have a couple little pieces of those ferns left because I'm going to need to use those in just a second. Now the X on the bottom is going to give us somewhat of a base to put our candles on. They're flameless candles and that is definitely what you want to use. Safety first. Yeah. I don't want to use regular candles with hurricanes over the top, although you could. But this centerpiece is kind of a quick one to make. It's time for new candles, y'all. So you can see, you just kind of balance them on there, and this is how it looks when it's lit up. And then you can see those little extra gaps there. Just go ahead and use the extra pieces and of greenery and just tuck in there, and no one will even know. Okay, so now this is the overview of what that centerpiece looks like. I think it is beautiful. I think it is rustic and elegant at the same time and it would look look absolutely beautiful on a coffee table, uh, a table behind a sofa or on your table, on your dinner table. 
What do you think of this one, of this project? I really like it. I'd love it if you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I do two to three videos every single week. And I am very active in the comment section, so I love talking to you and getting to know you. And I'm well on my way to 10,000 subscribers. So if you're a viewer and you like this, please consider subscribing. It really helps me a lot, and I appreciate it. So here's my lantern. It had glass in it, but it was broken. And I took it all apart, got it from the thrift store, cleaned it up. You can see that it's about 20, 24 inches. I'm going to use a variety of picks, same types and colors of what we used in our centerpiece because, you know, we want it to all look similar. A lot of these pieces are just little bits and pieces that I've taken off of projects from last year and the year before, and I keep them. Now I'm going to make some picks. You've seen me do this before. You're just going to add in stuff to kind of beef it up. I'm going to make the top a little bit thicker than the bottom just for my own purposes. I'm going to zip tie it in the middle, clip it off so that we have a nice little swag here. Typically with the swag you see that the top is going to be a little bit shorter than the bottom and the bottom is going to hang down more. You can certainly do this any way that you want to. You'll need a longer swag if your lantern is taller or you can make it shorter, whatever you like. But you see how I'm inter intertwining those petals? Now that looks like one big poinsettia, just like that. Sometimes you'll have enough room if you have thin enough wires that you could just push those in there and you don't even need any glue, which makes it perfect. But if you need some glue and you need to use additional zip ties, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna use a black pipe cleaner and kind of weave it up in there so that I will have something to attach it to the top of my black lantern. This way you won't be able to necessarily see that once it's attached. Follow me on my social media on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. I'd love to see you there. More of this white ribbon and we're going to make a bow. Now this is a wired ribbon and it is picking up every little piece of stuff. That's the one bad thing about flocked pieces. They just make such a big mess. We're going to turn this fabric over and over on itself and we're going to have two loops on this end, two loops on this end, and then we're just going to cut it off. We'll make a separate tail so don't be concerned about that. This is about eight inches. Then I'm going to do the same thing, only make it just a hair smaller with this. Now the jute doesn't have any wire in it, or not the jute, this burlap, it doesn't have any wire in it, but because we're making it so short, it's going to stand out nicely on its own, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. We're going to fold this over and over on itself as well, till there are two loops on each side, just the way we did the other one, and cut it off. So you can see here where your center is going to be, just like that. Put your little loose piece on the bottom. We're going to fold over the white piece to give us a line where we need to cut. We're going to cut through the wire and just into the fabric. Okay. Now we're not going to need to do that with, with that burlap because the burlap has already got little notches in the side. It's naturally notched. Take a zip tie, flip it over, and then cinch it up on the back. You can pleat this in your hand if you want. I'll show y'all how to do that at some point. Um, but for now, I just wanted to go ahead and get this little bow done and make it a little bit wider on the top than it is on the bottom. But you can move that around, but I'll show you that at another time. So be sure that you cinch it up where the little clamp thing is on the, the back or the bottom so that you don't see it. Start on the bottom and pull out your little loops. Pull them out and away from each other and you can kind of twist it side to side a little bit and that'll help it stand out. And then go up to your top loop and you can do the same thing there. You can tuck that little extra piece in or you can cut it off. And that's all it is to making that bow. Very simple, very simple. Now for the tails I'm just going to use a long piece of that burlap which already has a little curl in it. I'm going to fray the ends a bit 
because I want a straight edge here. I'm going to fray, just pulling those little pieces off one at a time, and then I'm going to make a straight little edge. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Just pull some of those little pieces loose, and you have a little straight edge just like that. You can just lay that down. It's going to be several inches longer than the white one, and that is fine. And pinch that up in the middle, and this is what's going to be our tails. I'm taking a piece of jute that I keep on my work table, and I'm going to tie a few knots in the back so that our tails are attached firmly and nothing comes loose when we fluff. That's simple enough. Leave those ends long because you're going to need to use those pieces to tie onto your little swag piece. I'm just cutting these at a slant. These are actually not going to hang down. I've decided to use these uh, as part of the bow to make it look a little bit bigger and you'll see how we do that once it's attached to the lantern. But for now, go ahead and tie your bow on and then you can cut it off. You can see my lantern has a door and we are on the front. Be sure that you are working to the front of your lantern. I'm going to lift up this swag. You can bend that top a little bit so that it will sit right there on the neck and then wrap those pieces of pipe cleaner around to secure them down. Now is the time you can look in there and cut off any little things that don't belong, little stems and such, and go ahead and fill in the spots that need a little extra. So I had some extra snowy pine cones and I'm just going to add those here and there to fill it out. Go ahead and grab those pieces of fern and tuck them in where they are needed and they'll make a very pretty swag piece. Now I know that this is not long enough for this lantern. I can clearly see that. I'm going to fix it. So you can see I'm just taking the white tails here and just rolling them under with my fingers. And because they're wired they're going to stay up there pretty nicely. It's just going to make like a little, a little curl. Same thing with that piece of jute on the top, just made a little curl up there, and it looks really cute. Now we're going to use these two pieces, little snowy limbs, and I'm going to be putting one at the top, and then I'm going to put one at the bottom, and that's going to help elongate our piece. So don't panic, you can always add a little something to it. Now we have to fill in the lantern, so I'm going to take a piece of this fabric, uh, I think it's an automotive section at Dollar Tree and excuse my head I'm just gonna fold it and tuck it in there to make a snowy bottom and then I'm gonna use a pick and a couple of battery operated candles to light it up and this is how it looks you can always make yours longer you can add a bigger bow you can put more ribbon in it make it your own that's what this channel is about it's making it our own okay we're going to use some flat white paint spray paint we're going to use two pumpkins that were they're very sad looking we're going to take the hardware off the pumpkins and we're going to repurpose these i'm going to sand off that glitter and then you have to be sure that you wipe this down because if you don't, then when you get ready to paint it, it's going to smear black dust all into your paint and you will have a very nasty, dirty looking finish. So I'm just, I just put a little bit of alcohol spray on a paper towel and I'm just wiping it off really well. Then I'm going to put some dowels down on the inside. It's just foam on the inside. Spray paint. Now this is two coats and it's still looks kind of gnarly but I'm going to be putting some more paint on it so it's not a problem. I'm going to use a utility knife to cut this part of my pumpkin so that when I flip it over and put the other pumpkin on top of it it will sit flat rather than being like having a big gap in it. It's just going to be more secure if we do it that way and it's going to look better I think. Now I know plenty of people say a snowman has three parts. He has a bottom which is the biggest, the center that's a little bit smaller, and then a head on the top. Well my snowman does not have that. I live in the south and we're lucky if we get one section. I have a short squatty little snowman but I think he's precious in the end. 
So to attach these pieces, I'm just going to use dowel rods and some hot glue. I think this is the best. I laid it down side by side to make sure that I got it right where it needed to be and made a mark on the other pumpkin because I had to choose what I wanted to be the top and what I wanted to be the bottom. So there, just like that. Now I know exactly where my center is going to be. I hot glued a second stick in there and now it's ready to be painted with my chalk paint. So I'm just using some of my Waverly white chalk paint and I'm going over the entire thing. Once it's dry, you can go over it with some adhesive spray and some glitter if you would like that or some fake snow or whatever you want to use for this. I like the matte look and I decided to leave it that way because he's going to have some sparkle anyhow. I'm putting some glue in those holes for where the sticks go and then some all around that area. Try not to get it out where the curve starts because I don't want all that messy glue to be showing. So I'm going to put it back down on those sticks, hold it there, let it dry, and then you can see it sits very nicely and flush. Alright, so I'm taking a variety of picks here. Again, I'm trying to use some of the pieces I already had from my other pieces, and then I have some garland and pit berries, and a little thrifted, I think it's a boxwood wreath, also my white paint, and I have this little ornament. Plus I have some, uh, a ribbon that's got jingle bells on it too, so. I thought these pieces would be good arms. So I've just got him balanced here, holding him still with some paint bottles. And I'm going to use these branches for arms. Push them in there, trying to get it kind of even. And I think that looks pretty good. And then once his arms are in, it makes it a lot easier to work on him. Okay, so yeah, I think I like them. I'm just going to go ahead and push them all the way down and keep them there. I have those other little willow branches, but I don't think they would show up very nicely. It almost looks like he's a snow angel, doesn't it? Almost looks like wings. Okay. Now, you can use a little wreath like this if you have it. He's not going to have a hat. He's going to have a little wreath on his head because I think he's so cute. And this kind of makes him look a little more angelic as well. But he needs some snow, so I'm going to take that white chalk paint and a chippy brush and just dab it all over the top on the inside and the outside. I'm not looking for a complete coverage here. This is just to look like the snow fell on it, like the rest of the things that we're using. Look at this gorgeous ribbon I got at the thrift store. It's like a burlap ribbon, and it has rusty jingle bells. It's just perfect. Love it. I'm going to add some hot glue to the bottom piece and a little bit in between to hold his little scarf and then trim up the little piece here and there. And it makes a great little scarf. Mm hmm. What do you think? So far, so good. He's going to look so much better. Okay, so I'm going to cut off one of these bells because I know that I want that ornament to go in that spot. I'm going to piece of that, put a piece of that willow branch right there, and I'm going to add my bell back, just kind of to the side a little bit, where you can still see that it is a bell. And I think that's cute. I'm going to attach it down with some hot glue, and it does stick very nicely to the burlap. I'm just trying to center it somewhat. It doesn't have to be perfect. This garland was a pain in the behind. So I would really recommend that you just get some of that scatter that you can get at Dollar Tree that's got all that different stuff in it. It's going to be a lot easier for you. Then I'm going to take some of the pit berry after I have glued these pine cones down and just kind of wind it around and around until I get as much coverage as I like. I'm not trying to get it super tight. I like that it's standing up in some places and poking out. My little berries are poking out and I'm totally fine with that. And this is how it looks. Cute. I'm going to put some hot glue on the back of it and just put it right down on his little head. You got to hold it there for a minute to make sure that it dries. I really like the coverage of that chalk paint on there. Made a big difference. Alright, so I'm just going to add a pine cone and I'm going to take 
some of these willow branches that I cut down and I'm just twisting them together and I'll make two of these little bundles and put them on either side I know you can't see very good from here so I'm just gonna talk you through it see there just gonna tuck it in on that side we're gonna do the same thing with another little bunch on the other side just like that a little hot glue is gonna help you hold those in place I'm gonna cut another one of these in half and put those right in there also and then I have a couple of these little twisted pieces of the pit berry that I you know wrapped around a pencil you've seen that before I'm gonna do that on both sides and add another pine cone on the other side of that little rusty bell I have a snowy boxwood pick it matches his crown so I think that it would be look, look pretty nice down here on his little badge his Merry Christmas sign that he is wearing now we're gonna pick eyes we have a variety of beads and pieces that we can use I think the little wood pieces will work and wouldn't it be precious if he had a little pine cone nose perfect look at that that is perfect so we're just gonna glue everything in place and this is our little snow person isn't he sweet or a little snow angel it could even be this is how he looks we're gonna start off with some deco mesh we're going to be using a little brush and some white chalk paint I have a little sign here that matches the colors I'll be using I have a snowflake you can pretty much get these anywhere this time of year and I have some little wood ornaments that we're going to be painting I think one came from a craft store and the other one came from Dollar Tree and then two Dollar Tree white Christmas trees I'm repurposing those from a swag last year some zip ties and some frosted looking picks they actually look like they have bits of snow on them or ice okay so you can do your swag either way but for this purpose I'm gonna use like a I think you would call it a teardrop shape so we're just gonna kind of overlap these to make it a little bit longer a little bit thicker but we're gonna leave one the one it's gonna be a couple of inches taller than the other one so you're just going to put one several inches down lower and then connect them with the tie right around that inner piece and then fluff these pieces out and I'm going to get these out of the way so I can put one more tie in there if you don't it's going to move around because you can see see there when I pull them to fluff them out they just keep trying to move away from each other so fluff all the pieces out to the sides we're going to be using these for our deco mesh to hold them in place all right so I think this is a good spot for another tie close to the bottom but in a place that of course will be hidden when we put every everything that we have on top of it and then I'll just use my cutters here and just trim off those extra pieces in throw those in the trash I know one thing for sure when you're working with this type of stuff it tends to grab on everything these and deco mesh and these little branches um, they just catch on to everything like velcro and they go all over the place you move one piece and everything's moving so you just want to make sure that these are all pulled out straight pine branches are straight so let's pull these all out straight and this will also help us when we're getting ready to place down our deco mesh bundles we can see exactly where we need to put them and then the tip ends a little bit longer we're gonna be putting something down there later if you would like to show me some love it's not required but always appreciated you can find the link to buy me a coffee in the description box below okay so I went and added some of this white mesh and it has like a silver running through it we're gonna take our gray mesh first and this is shorter a shorter mesh than the other I think this is eight 
inches and the white one is 10 inches, I believe. But you just need two different sizes to get this effect. So I'm gonna be using, to start the bundle, two gray and then two white. And I'm just cutting that frayed edge off to give me a nice clean edge. And then go up to the 10 and then just cut that off. And then this is what the bundles will look like when they're done, pretty much. Be sure you got some clips that you can hold your little bundles together. And I'll show you how we're gonna put those together. You're gonna take the gray, roll it over about three times, clamp it off, go to the other side, roll it over a couple of times, and then walk the center in. These are called cruffles. The rolled edges are gonna be under, just the way I like to do it. I know some people put the rolled part on top. You can do it whichever way you like best. Then we're gonna go next to the white piece. Same process here. Roll it under. That catches all those loose ends so you don't have any frayed bits sticking out of your pretty little bundle. And we're just gonna scoot them up close side by side and clamp them together. There'll be a gray, a white, and then another gray. Same process. Folding over, walking them together. Okay, and you know here, you can just see I easily flip it over and add it to the bundle. And this keeps everything with the rolled edges on the underside. And that's how I like mine. And they look like this, really cute. Follow me on my social media, on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. All right, so we're gonna start cutting down the picks. I'm gonna cut off these pieces. See, it looks like little ice or something on there. In the South, we call that sleet. It's like a mix of snowy rain. I'm gonna cut that off and then I'm looking for the pieces on my pick that have the most of those little icy pieces on them because we're gonna use those pieces. All right, now we're gonna start at the top. There's no rhyme or reason to this pattern. I just know that since it's a teardrop shape, I want the biggest, widest part of this on the top. So you can see I just placed it down and twisted the branches around it. Gonna go up here, down just a tad, but beside it, right across from it. I'm trying to decide here. Okay, so I'm gonna take that little stack, place it down inside of there, and then Hold it tightly and twist the branches around just a little bit. It's gonna hold it in place. So this is gonna be the widest part of the swag. That's gonna be the top. It has the longest branches and it's gonna have the widest deco mesh bundle parts. So now we're just gonna start angling downward and go back and forth. Now, we have five bundles with two gray and one white. So you're gonna need to have 10 gray pieces cut, and you're gonna need five white pieces cut to make each of those bundles. I like to do mine ahead of time, so then the assembly is a lot quicker. So you see I went to the right, and now I'm going down and to the left. Twist it around. Just like that. And I decided not to add any additional ribbon on this wreath. I, well, on the swag, I didn't think that it was necessary for the look that I was going for. And I do know a lot of people just don't care about the bows. They just are not big bow people. So, you know, this may be just the thing for you. Plus, the snowflake is going to light up, y'all. Come on, does it get any better than that? Okay, so you can see here, I tried to get the widest part on the top there, and then it goes a little bit lower down, and you can accomplish that look just by moving around your pieces of deco mesh and your, your branches just a little bit. Look at here. Look who's making an appearance. Oh, the Grinch. Yes. You're going to be seeing the Grinch and his progress throughout this video. My daughter was helping. She was doing her own thing in the basement, her and my son, while I was doing my crafting. They're little crafters too. Okay, so now I'm gonna use about eight inches here of this jute cord so that I can put a hanger on the back. 
it's really tight between those two I know you can't see what I'm doing but I'm pulling it down and then adding some glue right under it next to that metal piece and then I'm just tying a little knot here so that we have a loop in the end so that it can be hung just like that okay now here is a cork light set but you can get any type of little really thin line lights like this at Dollar Tree or pretty much anywhere okay here's the Grinch before he had his makeover this is how he looked originally <laughs> all right I'm gonna take the hanker out of my snowflake because I don't need it I'm gonna add some spackle in there <gasps> the Grinch is back all right and then I'm just gonna go around after my spackle is dry I'm gonna just go around and figure out how I want this wire to be attached and you can see you can bend it I want to make sure I had enough so I just bend it around used a little bit of tape to make sure that it was gonna fit nicely on my snowflake then I'm gonna add dots of glue and just use a little stick it's like a coffee stir or something I had a big pack from the thrift store um, and I like to use it for these types of projects just to hold things in place and to keep me from burning my fingers this is on my cool temperature on my glue gun now to attach the little light switch on the back I'm gonna use some of this double stick I don't know what this is tape it came from Dollar Tree but I lost the packaging so I'm not sure what it's called <gasps> look at that oh my goodness yes okay so now we're gonna move on to painting the rest of our snowflakes these are the bigger ones and all of these snowflakes look different and I like that because no two snowflakes are alike did you know that it's true they're like fingerprints they're different so I'm gonna take all the hangers off of the ones that were in that pack I think you can get something similar to this at Walmart um, I'm pretty sure you can but I'm gonna use this white and then and I'm kind of using a light hand here and I'm doing sort of a dry brush technique I don't want the wood to be completely covered up because my little inspiration piece which is the big snowflake that goes in the middle it has some distressing and some some of the same look as what we're doing here on the snowflake and I just really wanted everything to be cohesive and look similar so I'll show you how that other snowflake looks and you can see that they look better like that and I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing with each of the snowflakes so that they can all be drying at the same time this chalk paint is convenient it dries super fast there's the Grinch with his hat on up oh, he needs a little bit of hot glue to fix him but she's gonna work on that do, 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 do. okay so now we need to put that snowflake on the tree so I'm gonna use a pipe cleaner I'm just gonna peel up the little section here because that tape is repositionable you can move it around it's sticky kind of thick like those little slappy hands that kids like to play with that's what the texture reminds me of I'm gonna put some hot glue down on that full-size pipe cleaner and then I'm gonna press my light switch back on there and just hold it for a minute so that my glue will dry underneath and everything will stay together and not fall off because I'm gonna be manipulating the snowflake to get it in this wreath and I don't want anything falling apart so I'm just going through trying to find a spot that is empty between my deco mesh I don't want to squish any of my bundles down and distort the shape of my little swag so rather than wrapping it around the center I'm just gonna go and wrap it around the little branches this is gonna give me an opening to be able to put my hand in there to turn the switch on and off because that's the important part right we need to be able to turn it on and off alrighty so here are our snowflakes and they are all dry now I'm gonna take these picks and I just decided to cut them down shorter um, the bottom part of the pick for some reason didn't have much on it I guess that's the way it is when it snows and sleets anyway doesn't it the top of the part is what gets the snow but since we're doing this and we got snowflakes everywhere I wanted to put lots of sparkly pieces around 
So that's what I'm doing. I just cut them down smaller and I'm just gonna be adding these throughout wherever they look good. I'm not worried about perfect symmetry here. Just want to get it where it feels right, where it looks right. How many of you actually craft that way? Do you, do you go by how you feel or do you try to go by rules that other people give you? Because I'll tell you right now, if I went by all the rules that other people give me in crafting, I don't think I would have got as far as I have gotten. And I appreciate that uniqueness. It's God given. And all of us have the ability to do something unique, and we should do that because that's the stuff that brings us the joy, you know, brings us happiness, gives us a smile when we see it in our home, when we come home and it's hanging on our door. It gives us that smile and that welcome home that we all appreciate and enjoy. All right, so I'm going to start off with my biggest snowflakes, and I'm going to put those in there first. Just gonna place them here and there. I wanna be sure that they are touching something when I put the glue in there. You know, just poke it in there, expect it to stay. You need to have it pressed against uh, some type of framework underneath or another ornament or the picks, you know, so that nothing falls out. I don't want my projects that I work so long and hard on to just, you know, fall apart. I want them to last a while. So you're going to see me just taking the different ones and just placing them here and there. And you can actually give it a little dimension by gluing it right to the back of that star that's already there. You can see here. Just sandwich it between the deco mesh and the bottom of that snowflake. And honestly, if you don't have lights which I feel like you can find them anywhere right now, especially during holiday time. But if you don't have lights, you don't even have to put them on your swag. This, to me, is gorgeous as it is. It's just really not necessary, but it honestly is the icing on the cake. It, it gives such a warm and pretty glow. And you see how nice it looks with a variety of sizes and shapes? I just love it. Okay, so here are the little pieces that look like um, all the leaves have fallen off and, and this is what's left in the wintertime. These little sticks. And they have the same little ice on them, so they need to be added. This is going to give it a little more of a rustic look, which you know I'm all about that rustic life. And it's going to give it a little more size. It's going to make it a little wider, and I like that. Plus, it's like a flyaway, you know? Gives you a little more interest. And I think, honestly, it really brings the piece together, having these additional pieces in here. And they all came off the same pick. There were pine cones as well, but I didn't feel like the pine cones were appropriate for this. It would have just overwhelmed it and taken away probably from the snowflakes, and I didn't want that to happen. They need their moment. So you can see you're just tucking them here and there and they're very lightweight so they'll stick to that mesh and not pull anything down. You can do this with the little pitberry vines that you get at Dollar Tree or any other type of greenery. You know you could instead of doing the little sticks you could use other frosted greenery that you like. Um, the little frosted eucalyptus is really pretty and you can get that from Dollar Tree. You can use berries instead in these places whatever you want to use. But I really wanted to focus on, you know, the white and silver. I did a, a video uh, recently with a lot of gray and white and it, I just loved it. And when I thought about this snowflake and I knew I wanted to make a swag, I thought these would be beautiful together, really accent each other. So I'm just continuing to go around and you know, it's not important that they're the same size. Nature generally doesn't do things like that, so I'm just kind of following that rule. Just put them here and there, just like God does it, you know? Here and there. Okay, so you remember the long piece at the tip of the tree? We're going to use it to hang the sign. And look when we turn the lights on. Oh my goodness, the magic. 
I love this. You could take more lights if you wanted to and go all the way through your swag. But this brings a lot of attention to that middle piece and I like that. So here we are. And I've went ahead and done two different backdrops for you for this swag, just so you can see the difference. It mixes well with any other color scheme, pretty much, because it's white and silver and you know. But also, I've put it on a different backdrop so that you could see that it looks really good with gray if you want to do some type of a neutral look. See, this is a more warm backdrop. It's more woody and natural colored. Look how pretty. Oh, I love this. And then here it is with the gray, so you can see how nice it looks with that as well. You can still see some of the wood tones in the snowflakes, which I think makes it a little more versatile as far as um, color schemes in your house and whether or not you want to do it. And you could use a different color sign on the bottom other than Peace on Earth and the gray and white like I did. You could use something different there. Or you don't have to do anything at all on the bottom if you don't want to. So you can see all the supplies we're going to be using. I've got some picks. These are little salt and pepper shakers. Little deer. I have a little stuffed snowman with the little fur. And these jars came from Dollar Tree. Can you believe it? These canisters, they're really, really good. Hopefully you can find these at your store. There's a larger one and a smaller one. And in just a second, I'm going to measure these for you. Just to give you an idea, in case you don't find these, you can get a container that's close to that. I started off by looking for the little fish bowls, but I couldn't find them, so this is even better. Then I have some of this little miniature greenery stuff and some snow and a glass plate. Okay, so I'm going to use this satin nickel spray paint and do the plate and both of these tops. I'm going to let those dry. I'm going to take this sheet of styrofoam and it's about the same depth as the neck of my jar, so it's perfect. And I got that from the thrift store. I'm just going to press down. I don't want to have to guess here. I want it to be a nice snug fit because I don't want to have to glue this in. And I'm just going to press down with both until I get to my tabletop. And I started off by using my metal ruler here just to kind of score it, cut some little lines in here so it would be easier to work with the pieces one at a time. Works really well for cutting things. And then I started by taking my ruler and just kind of cutting down in there and then decided just to go up and down all around to get my circular shape. This is really easy to do. You can use whatever you want to use, but I had already cut my thumb. I did not want to have to get out a blade or anything else like that. Okay, so once it is popped out of its form there, you're just going to rub off the little edges they'll be kind of fraying and then we're going to cover those with a sheet of this faux it's like a snow fabric or a batting material but i got it a long time ago to use for my little snow village my little winter village so this is going to stick pretty well without any glue so you really wouldn't have to use it but just for security reasons i went ahead and opened mine back up sprayed a little bit and then glue put them back down in the same shape. Now be sure that you have windows open, doors open, a fan going, or that you do this outside in a well ventilated space. Now I'm going to put some on the top of these as well and take some of that snow. You can get it like a white, which is what I have, or if you prefer you can get it in like an iridescent and that's really nice too. I didn't use my salt and snowflake mixture this time because I didn't want to have to deal with the, the mess of it. Plus I don't have to have this in any type of a thickness so this works best. Alright, I'm just sorting through to see what I want to use. And I do have this pick that came off of something, I think from last year. And then so I've just cut it down and stuck it in the back. And I know that I want my little deer to go right there. So I've got a hot glue in on the bottom. It doesn't have shiny surface on the edges. So that's where you want to put your glue. And it will stick down without coming off. That's my experience anyway. And then another little pine pick I'm putting over here because I want it to look like he is in the woods. Deer like to bed down and 
and be in a secure hidden spot so I'm trying to kind of make him feel comfortable right there in his little home so these little picks are really nice I think when we grew up we called the tree a popcorn tree because the little seed pod would pop open like popcorn pops so I think that's what these little white pieces are. That's what it reminds me of anyway. But they also kind of put you in the mind of a flower and they're snowy. So I just, I love the texture and the interest that it gives to this piece. And I'm gonna take some of my little snowy pine cones and just put them here and there, just like if you were doing an arrangement, you know, like a floral arrangement. Just put them in there and protect your fingers. You can definitely use your little silicone finger protectors for that. Um, I do have an Amazon storefront, so if there's anything in my video that you need to learn about or know about, you can look it up on my Amazon store, and it is in my description box. So far, so good. I'm liking my little deer. Don't be concerned with the little holes in his head, because we are going to fix that. It's not going to be a problem. I'm going to do something really cool with that. And then you're just going to continue to put them around. I, I pick it up and put it down and, and look to see what I need to go where. And just like when we're doing wreaths and arrangements, pick it up, look at it from all angles, and decide what needs to go where. I do that quite a lot. Isn't he cute? All right, just add them in here and there. Make sure that you do not go past the edges of your little cap because you're going to have to squeeze the little surface here back into the jar so you don't want to extend past your edges leave everything in the center on the top okay so this these little berries came off of the little garland the little pitberry garland whatever and you can pull them off the wire and cut them and I decided to use these to make him look like a little buck when when uh, deer or babies when they get older, obviously, they start to grow little nubs on their head before they become horns. So now we have a little nub and buck. Isn't he cute? So I'm going to take a piece of this wire that I already had. Um, it came off of a floral pick that I used before. And I'm going to take the skinny wire part and just poke it right into the fabric. We have to have a way to secure this snowman and make sure he doesn't pop off of our little base when we put him together. So I'm just doing the same thing on both sides, putting the wire side down first, trim it down so he's got some little stilts, and then press it straight through the fabric. It's really easy to puncture through that fabric, by the way. No worries about that. Okay, so he's down, and now we need to add some hot glue underneath. And while I have him, because his bottom is so uh, thick and so um, round, I have to put quite a bit of glue and then hold him down there till he's completely dry. Again with the Pitberry Garland, I'm going to make a little circle with a couple of loops and we're going to put it down over his arms, making sure again that it stays on that base and does not go off of the base. And I'm going to put that down at his feet and then we're going to make almost like a little wreath circle to go around him. So I'm just going to lay these pine cones one at a time all in the same direction all the way around just like this. So you can see the little pit berries sticking out underneath. I like them. They look snowy to me. It looks perfect. Just gonna go around and around here. Stay tuned because later on we have information about the 8,000 subscriber giveaway. It's coming up. You don't want to miss it. Okay, so we're gonna continue around just like this until the circle is complete. You can use anything you want to use here. You can use little iridescent pom-poms to look like snowballs or just anything you want. And so that part is finished. I like it. And I'm going to add two of these little trees. And these are just little white trees that you can get at Dollar Tree or at Target, um, Bullseye's Playground, whatever. And you can just cut them because they're on wire so you can make make them smaller if you would like and I've used a larger one and a smaller one and then I'm going to twist around just a little dowel rod that I have here to make a little twisty like a snowy branch I'm gonna add some hot glue and tuck that right inside behind the tree and it's gonna stand up right by his little hands or his little arms cute they almost look like a little heart don't they on the top 
And again, just kind of looking all the way around to see what else I want to add. I'm going to add one more right to the front, right behind the trees and on top of the pine cones. And he is just too precious. It might be a she. Who knows? She's liking her fur coat and her little fur wrap there. Now I'm going to disassemble this because I need two wood discs. So I'm just going to take this apart. And then I'm going to spray paint them with the same paint. Okay? So now we have to assemble everything with our snow globes. And I'm just trying to get an idea of what pieces I want to go where. And I know that I want the top to actually be the bottom now. So I'm going to start by taking my small jar and the deer, who is smaller, and I'm just going to press it up into the neck or the mouth of that jar. Press it, press it, press it. And I do have one of my branch tips a little bit bent over, but I am not bothered by that one little bit. Everything doesn't grow straight in nature, so who knows how it would have gone if it would have just been plunked down by the wind. So there you go. Very cute. Now we need to cover the top. We don't want that to show. and It's got a dimple in it like the bottom of a jar normally has. And it's kind of ugly. We're going to need to cover that up. Plus, if it's going to be a candle holder, we need a flat surface to put there. So we're going to go around with a little bit of fix-all glue and the hot glue in between. you got to work really quick after you put the hot glue on because it dries fast on glass and on metal. And there you go. This is going to be our top and our bottom. And I think it looks great. Now we're going to take some of this trim. It's kind of fuzzy, sparkly little rope trim. And then I'm going to cut a piece of greenery down. It's just cutting off little pieces so I have something to grab onto with the rope. Just trimming it. Now I have a little stem to attach it. And I can put it right underneath that knot. Put a little bit of hot glue there to make sure nothing comes off. And then I can just tie it in there. I don't want anything to fall apart. Y'all, I swear I don't have ghosts in my house. What you hear above is my kids. Okay, so there we go. I'm tying this down. Very simple. You could hot glue it if you wanted to. And you could certainly use a different type. You could use jute or anything you want on the top. But I thought this would be appropriate for Winter Wonderland because it's sparkly. So now we have one piece of our pick. I'm going to add another one of these little pods, and I'm going to add another little pine cone. Just like that. Isn't he adorable? I love it. All right, now it's time for the snowman. We're going to put him in carefully, making sure you get his arms in there, because the mouth of the jar is the smallest diameter. So I'm just tucking as we go along. He fit in nicely. Got plenty of room there. Always check before to make sure that your items are going to fit. So just, you know, check it out first. Now I'm just going to press it in. Screw that lid down nicely. And when you flip it back over, this is how this one looks. You can put extra snow in if you want to, but I did not need it for mine. I like it like this. And the one at Bath & Body Works did not have loose snow in it either. All right, so I'm taking that plate. It is upside down. And I am placing the bottom of the jar, which is now the top, right on top. Give it time to dry. So I'm trying to support that, that plate on there to make sure nothing happens. And I'm going to add a wooden disc on the bottom of this one. Well, it will be the bottom now. Just to make sure that both of my items looked, you know, like a pair. I'm going to take the rest of that little piece of rope and go around right in the center right around where the little crack is between those and a little bit of glue here and there just to make sure it doesn't move and instead of tying this off I'm just gonna make it just loop around and that's all I've got some really pretty this is like a metallic looking almost like a ladder that I'm gonna add right underneath the plate at the top of this jar because I want to add something else and I need something to adhere the two things together to hold it make it a little more stable so when you glue to glass it can be difficult things like to pop off so I'm gonna go all the way around with a little bit of glue so that I don't make a mess glue a little bit onto the plate a little bit onto the jar 
or the canister and just keep going around just like that. Now it's going to cut off in a minute, but don't be concerned because I promise you at the end of the video, you're going to see the full effect. You'll be able to see it for what it is in the end. Okay, so I'm going to continue around and this is how it looks and you could certainly leave it this way, but I got these icicle garlands at the thrift store and I thought, you know what, what a perfect place to put these. So now the hot glue on the ribbon will hold these little plastic icicles nicely in place. And you can certainly use Gorilla Glue or whatever type of adhesive that you like. Be sure you subscribe if you're enjoying this video. I would love to have you as part of my YouTube family and my journey to 10,000 subscribers. We're going to start off with this wagon wheel wreath, which was originally from Dollar General several years ago. And I took all the picks off so I could use it again. I've got new picks. And I've got these little metal trees, um, <laughs> houses rather, from Dollar Tree. And they come in three different colors, so you can use whatever you like. But I like the, the metal for this wreath. Cut your picks apart because we're going to make new picks. I've got two little picks that came from Dollar Tree with a couple little things on it. And I'm going to beef them up. So I'm going to add some white eucalyptus to it. And I'm going to add another greenery pick with some frost on it. And I'm just going to use these pipe cleaners to hold them together. You can use floral wire. You can use floral tape, zip ties, whatever you want to use. I'm going to make several of them that are somewhat similar. And then I think I made two of those. And then I'm going to make a few more that are a little bit different. And you'll see those as well. Okay, see those? And then we're going to wrap these together. A little bit different, but it's all in the same theme. Everything is going to match nicely together. You can bend them out. They are mostly on wire, so just bend them. Make them look how you want. Nothing needs to lay flat. And then start placing them around where you think you might want them. I always do this first. I don't always leave it in the video, but I always lay them down first to decide what is most pleasing to my eye. And you know it's going to be different for everybody. You know, everybody's going to like something different, and that is fine. Your crafts and creations are yours. They bring you joy. No one can tell you that it's not right. You don't need approval, is what I'm saying. Be confident. Do it with joy in your heart, and be confident. Okay, so I'm just using zip ties here, but you can use, you've seen me use floral wire to do this, too. You could certainly use hot glue if you wanted, because this is just like a MDF wheel. Whichever way you want to do it will work fine. I'm just kind of overlapping them where you can't see the stems from the previous one. You want it to be nice and full. Then move your picks around where they look nice. And then, so you can, we're alternating. So I had one of the thinner picks, then one of the thicker ones with the pine cones, then a thinner one. Then we're going to do the thicker pick with a pine cone in it, just like that. So I am asking that if you enjoy my videos, if you're already a viewer, I would love for you to subscribe and join this family. There's my son's hands. He's all into it too. He's putting the winter ma magic in here. But I would love to have you. I really would love to have you. We have so much fun. I'm always in the comment section responding, you know, answering questions and just talking. I love to talk to y'all. I love to get your input. And so many people leave tips which is great because it helps us all. So be sure you read the comment section, you know, if you're a subscriber or if you're a viewer who is considering subscribing. Okay, so now it's time to put the pieces down. And I'm going to do it just like this. You can put your houses on here any way you want to, but I'm trying to get mine centered in an area where the back is open so that I can put my little flickering flameless candles inside. So I'm trying to leave a space in there where I can get those pieces back on the inside. So just like this, I'm gluing it down. And don't worry if you make a mess, you know, just put something underneath your surface. Because sometimes, you know, you put glue where it doesn't need to be and it's dripping on the table. It's okay. It's just crafting. It's supposed to get a little messy, right? 
So press them on down there and then add in your pieces of greenery in the additional spots that you want them. You're not going to see the end of this clip either because for some reason it disappeared on me. But uh, definitely, definitely stay tuned to the end because you will see what it looks like all together. I'm just adding in some more greenery and then I'm going to add some of those little Christmas trees just like this around the houses. Okay, so here's our reveal. Look at these pieces. Oh my goodness. I am so happy but with the way this. these turned out. Aren't they cute? See the little flickering lights on the inside? I love this piece. So here is this candle, our little snow globe with the candle on top. Definitely use flameless candles. Thank it's just the so safest for being part of my family. And I'm so grateful to have you stop by today. So I chose this little polar bear from Dollar Tree. And there are several different types that you can choose from. They're itty bitty, just tiny little things. Some snowflakes from Dollar Tree. These I've had in my stash for a while. Some of these snowy willow picks, also from Dollar Tree. Some cedar picks. And then these are two little pieces of scraps that I had. So we're gonna start off with this beautiful little white planter. And I did not check mine when I got it out of the box and you can see there's a chip right there. So be sure that you check yours. I was just in a rush. You're gonna use some floral foam to put down on the inside. Just cut a piece that's relatively the right size. And then you can just use a metal ruler or a knife to carefully remove and make it flat right on the top. Just like that, very easy. This foam is kind of messy, so you're gonna to have to be sure you wipe this all back off. Clean off your surface before you go forward or it will stick on everything. So I'm just gonna start with this snowy pick and put it down in here. I'm trying to get an idea of how big I want this to be, and I think that that overwhelms the size of that little planter. So you can pull it apart, bunch it together. Um, you can use some floral wire if you want to connect it, but I think that doing it this way is gonna give me the right height that I'm looking for. I'm just gonna cut apart a few of those little branches there. Very easy to alter these pieces. You just use your wire cutters or your scissors and then cut those pieces off. You wanna be sure that you're gonna have some variety of height. It's just more interesting instead of everything being exactly the same, matchy matchy. Um, it's not like that in nature, you know? So we don't want this to look landscaped, in other words. We want this to look uh, woodsy, rustic, and you know, kind of woodland. That's how I like to do it. But you can always do it the way you like. Now you wanna be sure that you cover up that foam on the inside so it just looks better that way. And if you use full enough pieces, you can certainly cover that up. I just cut a piece down and then put it right there and it also helps kind of disguise that chip. Same goes with these gorgeous glittery picks. Um, you will see in my crafting, I don't do much glitter, but I think that it is appropriate in the winter time and at Christmas time um, to use a little sparkle, just like snow sparkles, right? Okay, so then we're gonna make a pick with these. I don't want this to look flimsy, so I'm gonna just layer these two together and cut your little strings off because these are actually um, sold as Christmas ornaments. You can use the little clear ones that you can see up there in the right-hand corner if you want, whatever you wanna use, but I, I like the silver for this. So I'm just gonna use some um, hot glue and a pick that I got the, um, the cedar pick. I just cut that off the bottom and we're gonna use that as a pick because it's glittery, so it's gonna match perfectly. Add some hot glue on here. Carefully protect your fingers. If there's even a slight chance you might get glue on yourself, these glue guns get super hot. Okay, so we're gonna add some more here and just kind of sandwich this in here. Almost like making a cookie pop. Glue that down, and if you feel like you need a little more glue between the other pieces that are sticking out, you can go ahead and do that too, but you have to be very careful because um, your exposure to getting glue all over you is definitely there when you start getting micromanagey on your snowflake. Just pressing it together to make sure the glue is sticking to all three of those surfaces, and I'm gonna see where I want it to go in my arrangement. I know that I want it to be sort of in the middle 
and I'm, I'm trying to show this to you at a slight angle and so it's crooked to begin with but then I do kind of lean it a little bit like that and now I think that looks a little bit better you can do whatever you like I like the look of this this is an easy one y'all you can definitely do this so Dollar Tree sells these little canvas wall art pieces. They're beautiful, but they're so small, it's kind of hard to use it alone. So I thought a wreath is a perfect place for it. I'm gonna use some of these cloths. that for card detailing. I'm gonna use some greenery picks that I already had and then a 14 inch wreath from Dollar Tree. I'm going to take these cloths, pull them apart. They have little, um, you know, little plastic things in them so you just pop those out lay it flat and then go ahead and start cutting some strips I cut mine in each one of them in four pieces and I'm just gonna begin to wrap this around this wreath this is super easy I'm not wearing my finger protectors and I know I sound like a broken record but please be careful okay now I'm just gonna start wrapping this around here I'm just gonna make sure that it is overlapped slightly onto itself so that there's no space and that it's a little more quilted it's a little bit thicker if you do it that way instead of stretching it out as far as you can go so just put a little hot glue there pat that down and then wherever you need to trim go ahead and trim it off or fold it under because you don't want this is the back of the wreath here you don't want all those end pieces to show in the front you want it to look finished and smooth you don't want ends and seams on the front of your creations so you can see so far how that's gonna look. Go ahead and go to the back and overlap for your next piece. And you just twist it around just like we did before. And you're gonna continue to go around just like that all the way around your wreath. Wrapping it, gluing it, putting finished edges under, inside, and to the back. So now we're back on the back side and we're finishing up I'm just pulling that pressing it down and then I'll take that little flap cut it off and then make sure that it is nicely finished on the back so now we're going to start on putting this little canvas sign on our wreath we're going to cut this off just a little bit of floral wire and it looks like I'm running low there note to self buy more floral wire cut that off and then we're gonna glue these on either of these little short sides. Just add some hot glue. If you prefer to use some type of a tape, you can do that, but I get kind of rough when I am tightening things down and I'm not sure that anything else would work, except maybe a staple. That would probably be actually the best thing. Okay, so while that is cooling, I'm gonna go ahead and go over to my pick. Now there's a variety of different types of things on here. So I'm just going to cut off the three different kinds that I like. There'll be three different types of greenery. In other words, on the swag part, which is gonna be the top of our wreath. So you can use three picks of whatever type that you like from Dollar Tree if you don't have thrifted pieces or leftovers. So we're just gonna turn them stems toward each other. Same thing with the other one. And it's pretty much the same thing on either side then take a zip tie and tighten it but not all the way down leave a little space in there so that you can add more and you can take things out if you're not sure of them I'm gonna add this little piece of I think this is cedar on the top and then I'm just going to tighten it down you can pull that to the back so that you don't see that little knob sticking up and just trim it off it will be covered up so don't worry about that all right so now you can just use a another one of those zip ties and cinch that on whatever part of the wreath that you want to be your top it's a circle so there's really no top or bottom you get to decide where your pretty spots are maybe if you made a mistake or there's a little gap maybe that's where you want to put your swag so it's going to cover up your mistake all right, and I'm just gonna pull this out a little bit and fluff it up a little bit. And I like the variety of glitter and there's some larger, chunkier pieces of glitter in there and also some snowy branches. I think that looks good. I couldn't find the perfect green to match what's in this sign. It's more of a bluish green, but I think we get the point. You can use whatever you have. Now I'm just gonna 
push those wires through that fabric and wrap it around and close it. Try to make sure that you have it around one of the wires on the inside of the wreath so that everything stays snugly in place. Now go ahead and trim these off so it's nice and neat. And now we're gonna start with a bow. So I've got some of this ribbon that I already had and then this is some that was thrifted. I'm gonna take my little bow making tool that I made and I do have a link for that uh, if you're interested in trying to make your own. It's very easy. I'm gonna fold this wired ribbon in half and then press it right down in here. I'm gonna leave my tails about eight inches long. Then I'll just be flipping that ribbon over. Since both sides of this ribbon are exactly the same, there's no need to twist it in the middle. But I'll show you what to do when we get to the one that's got a good side and a not so good side. And we're making these loops about probably five inches long I think is what I have I don't have my glasses on right now but I think they're about four or five inches and then the tails are eight inches so I'm just gonna do one tail to the top one tail to the bottom and then cut that off at this point if you want to dovetail you can go ahead and dovetail but I am gonna continue with this bow so I'm gonna take the snowy bow here it's iridescent just absolutely gorgeous it is also wired in the same uh, thickness is the other one though it doesn't matter now you're gonna twist in the middle so now my white side is gonna be on the inside and my iridescent side will be up top press it down and make my loop I want this one to be a little bit smaller than the white one I'm gonna press it down give it a twist so that the white or the undecorated side is in the middle and then the iridescent side is up again and that's how you do it. Same thing with the tails here, eight inches on each side. Now, you can go to Amazon and you can buy a bow, the, the bow maker tool. I'm not exactly sure the exact name of what it is. I'm not suggesting that you have to buy anything. If you are not able to buy anything, then you might wanna try doing something like this. And you can certainly make your bows by hand and you don't have to use a bow maker. I just wanna give you options. So we're gonna put a zip tie underneath and slide that up, holding on to the center. I'm gonna slip my zip tie over into the middle since it was off to the side just a little, slipping it into the middle. And that keeps all of the loops of our bows the same size. So I'm gonna cut off that extra bit and begin to pull and fluff out the little loops in the bow. I was not sure that the shininess and the brilliance in that bow would actually come through on my camera but it is and I'm pleased with that it's very pretty it's a very pretty ribbon I love finding stuff like this at the thrift store because when you pay by weight you end up getting you know nine twelve dollars worth of ribbon for two or three dollars it's really nice so now, if you haven't already dovetailed your ends, you might want to go ahead and do that, or you can cut them in a slant, whatever type of finished look you like best. And then I'm going to use a white pipe cleaner. It's fuzzy, just like our wreath, so it should just disappear right into the wreath. I've got that bow on there, and we're at the back of the wreath now, and we're going to secure it and also make a hanger. So you're gonna take your two tails that you have left, wrap them around and then back down and you have a nice little loop to hang your wreath. At this time, you want to see how exactly you want your tails and your loops to be on your bow. You could certainly pull all the tails down underneath if you would like, or you can leave them kind of up top and just kind of, you know, asymmetric. And I like to do that a lot of times. As I'm fooling around with the bow and fluffing it, I kind of just follow what the what the bow wants to do. If you know, if you understand what I'm saying, I kind of do. I go with the flow. In other words, I go with the flow. I don't fight it. And this seems to want to go like this, so I'm going to let it. We're going to just let it be, just like this. And at this point, if you want to stop, you certainly can. If not. You can go ahead and add a little bit of greenery on the bottom and I felt like it needed a little more. So that's what I'm doing here. Just using two little leftover sprigs that look a little bit different. I'm just looking to see how I like them and then I'm just gonna glue them down. You can do berries, you can do whatever you want. 
leave it white, um, you know, whatever you feel like you want to do here. I don't want anything falling off. Okay, so now I'm just picking it up, looking at it from all angles, because you know that's what we do on this channel. We pick it up, we look at it from all sides. Isn't that a beautiful little canvas? It's so pretty. Okay, so now I feel like there's a hole above the bow, and I feel like I want to fill that in. So that's easy enough to do. You're just gonna add some glue and then just go ahead and cut down a piece that you like and just put it right in the top. I hope you stick around and join our fun. Okay, so this is plaster chalk paint, white chalk paint. Use whatever kind of paint you like. I have got some folk art brushed metal and it's like a brushed silver, I believe, and then some Martha Stewart glittery. Glittery paint, I would say, but it's more like a glitter glue. You could probably use that too. Some Let It Snow from Dollar Tree, some Skates from Dollar Tree, and then also these little hanging chalkboard signs came from Dollar Tree. And they come in two different sizes, so you just choose what you like. I have a little cotton cording also. You're gonna start by taking off all of your jute. Remove all those hangers, easy enough. Now you see here, some of these are not finished very well and they're splintery, we don't want that. You want this to be high end and you're going to get your sanding paper or your sanding block and just go over all those wooden pieces on the tops there. Smooth them down so you don't hurt yourself. Now see, if you don't have a special tool, you can pull these pieces off the skate. I just showed you what will happen if you just pull it off. You may have some splintering, but you're not going to see it, so it's not a problem. However, if you have a tool like I do, go ahead and use something thin like this slide it under and just slide it around under there before you pry it up and that'll kind of break the glue seal same thing here with this tie the snowflake is so thin it would absolutely break if you try to do it with your fingers but you can do it just like that if you slide something thin under there so sand off anything that needs to be sanded on the skates there's a little rough spots where the glue was that held those snowflakes down wipe it off and then go ahead and begin painting now, I chose these colors because I like a rustic look. I feel like I really want these to fit into my particular home, but you can do these any way you like. I like the idea of having a creamy white and then a bright white together. So that's why I did mine this way. Just get whatever brush you like to use and just get in there. Leave that row out where the um, the grommet spots are or where the eyes are that you put your laces in. Just leave that part out. And <laughs> I was dancing and listening to Christmas music. And uh, go ahead and finish the rest and let it dry. And then I'm just taking that white and putting it over the snowflake here. I'm just almost like a dry brush I guess I'm trying to like wipe some off and then rub it on there because I don't want it to be so stark you know I want it to kind of blend in a little better I'm taking that brush metal and going over the blade part of the skates this is going to be underneath the boot itself or the shoe this the top part and then just make all of that that silver color now you can use gray you can use whatever you want you could also use acrylic paint markers you could use regular markers use what you have I'm going to use that same paint and do the other skate and then I'm going to go over the wording of let it snow. It's thin. It's even with shaking it up it's kind of thin so you can almost see underneath it. I'm going to take my cherry colored furniture repair marker from Dollar Tree and I'm going to use it as a stain for these pieces. These are all going to blend in nicely together and I think this makes it have a richer look a more finished look I guess. You're going to go over the top and all the pieces that you can see. We're not worried about the back. That's not going to be seen. So here we go. This is what it looks like. And I'm going to use this same color to go around the bottom of the shoe, which is usually like a, I don't know, a leather. So I'm going to go ahead and do it like that. Going back over with that bright white that I have and go right over where the shoe would lace up or the boot would lace up. I'm trying not to get into that line that's beside there that's kind of lasered or cut into there because I want this to to show 
I want to leave it there so that it gives it more dimension. Just like that. You can use a toothpick while your paint's wet and clean that out. Now we're going to cover the top of the boot or the skate with a little bit of the fur that we used on our wreath. Very easy to do. So you're just going to lay it there and trim it down. Nothing precise here. Got to have that coffee while you're working, right? Put some hot glue on there. And you could probably use a spray adhesive also for this. I just have my hot glue handy and I like to use it because it's there. And same thing on the other one. And this is going to give a little furry top. And I like the way it looks. I think it looks cozy. Okay, so once that is flat, we're going to, and I'm making sure that it's nice and dry here and cool. Just kind of looking at it to make sure that when I fold it over, I don't have a lot of bulk in the middle and that it just kind of meets itself. And it does. So pretty good for eyeballing, right? Some more hot glue is going to be put right along the top and the bottom and you can fill on the inside if you would like. Kind of roll it down, press it down and it'll give you a nice little smooth edge there. Same thing with this. And be sure if you've used uh, any type of a stain that you wash your hands before handling light colored stuff because the stain will transfer right over onto your light fabrics. So just, just know you need to do that. I do have white paint on my fingers, but it's dried and this is white, so we're good. All right, now I'm just kind of feeling for the edge and I'm gonna go right outside the edge and just trim it down a little bit because it's a little too much and I don't want it to look ridiculously sized against the skate when we put it back on. So I'm just, it was naturally curved, so I'm just curving it. And then you can just kind of brush over that fluff with your fingers and it'll fluff it right up and look how cute. Okay, so I'm gonna take some of that glittery paint and I'm going to just kind of, if you brush it, it's gonna be very barely noticeable. So I did actually change the technique when I started doing these snowflakes and just kind of dabbed it up and down and brushed it back and forth. It seemed to lay more paint on that way. You can see here I'm dabbing it and more of the glitter actually shows. It's very slight. Okay, so once these are dry, I'm gonna go back in with a silver acrylic pen and I'm gonna go back over those circles where you would lace up the skate. Skate, boot, shoe, I have said all kinds of footwear. It's actually a skate. Let it dry so you don't smear anything on both of them. And look how pretty that looks. It's pretty. Now we get to put our little fuzzy top back on. It does curve downward, so be sure that you put it back on correctly. Just like that and that, oh my goodness, I love this. I love this. Little bit of hot glue and you can put that fuzzy little piece right back on there. What do you think? Do you like these? Which one do you think you like the best so far? I mean, I know you haven't seen the entire thing here but do you have a favorite yet? Okay, so now we're gonna add the snowflakes back down on both of them. Y'all, we are almost to 10,000. I set a goal for myself to have 10,000 subscribers by 2022 and we are almost there. Just a few hundred left. I'm so excited. Are y'all excited? I'm so excited. All right, I'm gonna take some of that white cord and I'm just gonna go where it's mainly behind the little flag piece here. You gotta go in on one side, pull it back, and then push it back up into the other side. You do that on each one of these, and that is gonna form our little banner or bunting or whatever you wanna call this. Or garland, yeah. So you can see how it will look. And then we're gonna start putting our pieces down and then we'll add a little something extra. So once you get it where you want it, a little tip for you is hold it in place and just pivot it up. I'm gonna put this where it's on the top here so there's some shading behind it. You can see some shadow behind it and it gives it, uh, I think, a little more depth. I'm gonna go right underneath the blade here, add just a little. And the best thing about these little things, that hot glue wipes right off. Look at that, it comes right off. It's not a chalkboard texture. It's, it's a little bit different. 
If you've got these, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's kind of hard to explain it. It just looks like a chalkboard. And then same thing here to make sure that my things stay in the same place. Now, I went and got this little, this came off of a sign that I did last year. It's a snowflake that's metal and it's actually an ornament. I want to put it in the middle and I want it to be raised up so I used a scrap of wood. And now I'm going to take uh, a little hot glue and put it down. I made a little wreath with the pit berry garland that is white. And that was actually in the Christmas or the fall, I think. And I'm going to just add some hot glue. I laid it down first so that I don't make a huge mess. I can just put the glue exactly where I need it to make it stay down. And then I'm going to use some of my clamps from Dollar Tree and just let it sit there until I feel like it's had enough time to dry. And you can see when I'm pulling on it, it's definitely there. Now I'm going to add my little Let It Snow. You could color this white if you want it to stand out more. I loved it just the way it is, so I'm going to leave it that way. But do whatever you think you need to. You know, paint's easy. You just add more. Just paint over it. Now I want to add some mini wreaths to go right in between as spacers. So I'm going to do the same thing on a smaller scale and just wrap that pit berry around itself. So easy, just like that. I'm going to use the same white cord and just take a few scraps of it and just tie a double knot to hold it down. And then you can just trim that off whenever you get done. And I cut mine way down. You can make a bow here if you wanted to, um, you know, whatever you want to do, but I didn't want to, um, to do that. So I just cut it off right above the knot, do that on both sides. And then this is how we're going to hang it. Do you see here? I'm making a loop and I'm going to take that loop and tie it, pull it through. So now we have a little loop to hang it with. You can trim off your extras if you would like. You can do that on both sides. Measure where you want to hang it first so you know for sure what you need. So these are my beautiful winter DIYs. And I really do think that they are beautiful. There's something that is so magical and beautiful and clean and crisp about winter. And I think that the colors that we use are just reminiscent of good times and coziness. And I just love it. I love it. Thank you to all of my subscribers. I am so, so happy to have you. You mean so much to me. Your support, your comments, you're just the sweetest bunch of folks. I really do appreciate you. Thank you so very much for stopping by. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.